Good morning, San Antonio starts right now. And a good morning to you. It is Tuesday. It is January 3rd. Belated Happy New Year. We were off yesterday. Yeah. And I can safely say, I think for both of us, we made no resolutions this year. <laughs> No, we didn't. We, we kept that resolution, we not, kept, not to make a resolution. Right, you're yes. exactly right. Now I'm shaking on it. Yep, yes. well done. Yes. Well played, Stephanie Serna. <laughs> All right, let's talk to Justin Horn about this forecast. Unbelievably warm yesterday. Yeah. It was, and my resolution is to get more rain in the forecast uh, because 2022 was just uh, disappointing all the way around when it came to rainfall. Uh, we didn't get a drop of rain last night with a cold front that came through. And as you mentioned, it was warm yesterday. The front came through last night, brought some gusty winds with it briefly. Not a drop of rain, but what it did do is drop the dew points so the air is drier and it also kicked up mountains here. That's the uh, negative side of things. Here's the 24 hour dew point change, and it's pretty huge. I mean, negative 38. That's how many uh, degrees in dew point we dropped. Uh, so the air went from very humid yesterday to very, very dry today and will stay dry through much of the work week. Here's the downside. Mountain Cedar jumped back up into the very high category, 11,550. Molds are low at 340. And by the way, we have that uh, pollen count posted to our website every day. If you want to go check it out, it's in the pollen section of ksat.com. We've got a nice new handy dandy chart too. You can check out that shows the history of Mountain Cedar over the last several days. Case that 12 hour forecast uh, by 11 a.m. We're up around 68, 70 by noon time. And then this afternoon, we're close to 77 degrees for high. So it is still warm, but not as warm as yesterday. And with the drier air, it just feels a little bit better. Tomorrow morning will be nice and chilly. We've got some more rain chances on the way. We'll look at that for you coming up this weekend. Plus, we'll take a deeper dive into mountain cedar as well in just a few minutes. But let's go over to Stephen now who's had a fairly busy morning, I think. Am I correct? Yeah, that's pretty spot okay. on, Justin. Thank you. As we get a look there at TransGuide, a little bit different here uh, as what we were showing you earlier. You know, a lot of folks have already returned to work. We know some kiddos are back in the classroom. We saw some school buses out there on the TransGuide cameras, but uh, now things are moving along just fine. Morning rush is almost back to normal, but uh, we will continue to monitor the roads throughout the week as more kiddos are expected to return to school tomorrow, so it'll probably be a little bit more busy out there. But uh, just be on the look out because while some of the issues have dwindled down, we did have an overturned vehicle here along Loop 1604 eastbound at Lookout Road. Now this is one of those spots where there are no trans guide cameras, so unfortunately we can't show you the conditions out there, but it doesn't appear to be causing too much of a delay. But check this out. A bunch of stall vehicles back here in town along Loop 410, 35, US 90, and even 37 right here closer on the southeast side of town. Not clear what's causing those uh, stall vehicles, but just make sure if you have any road plans to just check your vehicle before you get out there. But back here on TransGuide, things are moving along just fine. Sunglasses may be a good idea, but other than that, uh, it has been a pretty busy morning, and it does look like a lot of those issues have dwindled down, guys. Stephen, thank you. Let's look at today's 9 at 9. This morning, the sentencing for ex Bear County Constable Michelle Barrientes Vela continues. It comes four months after she was found guilty on tampering charges. She faces anywhere from two years probation to 10 years in prison. We will be live streaming the hearing on our website at kset.com and on our KSET YouTube channel beginning at 10 a.m. Bill safety DeMar Hamlin remains in critical condition after a hard hit on the football field during Monday night football in the first quarter against the Bengals. The 24 year old suffered cardiac arrest after the hit. His heartbeat was restored on the field before he was rushed to a Cincinnati hospital. The 118th Congress is being sworn in today and before members take their oath of office, the House is scheduled to elect a new speaker. Republican leader Kevin McCarthy still does not have enough votes to secure the win. Some speculation is that this afternoon's vote could feature multiple ballots for a House speaker, something not seen in 100 years. The House will not be able to conduct any other business until the speaker is elected. New details are emerging in the machete attack on three NYPD officers during New Year's Eve celebrations. Sources say 19-year-old Trevor Bickford was added to a terrorist watch list just weeks before the attack. After he expressed a desire to join the Taliban, FBI agents interviewed Bickford in mid-December after his family grew concerned about his plans to travel to Afghanistan. Authorities in China are criticizing travel restrictions in place by various countries, including the U.S. They say there is a lack of scientific basis and call the measures excessive and unacceptable. The travel restrictions are in regards to COVID testing for people traveling from China. Some also said it's hypocritical after several countries 
previously called for China to ease their zero COVID approach. Back to work on Wall Street. Futures overnight ahead of the first trading day of 2023 have been pointing to a higher open. But the Wall Street Journal says the first half of the year could be a bumpy one with analysts at several big banks thinking markets may slide before bouncing back later in the year. Southwest Airlines now says it is back on a normal schedule, but it is still unwinding all the problems caused by nearly 16,000 cancellations the week of Christmas. The airline says it is still processing refunds and shipping luggage back to their owners. Whether you jump jobs or stayed put, there's a good chance you saw a raise recently. The Federal Reserve Bank of Atlanta says wages for workers who opted to stick with their companies made 5.5% more in November compared to a year earlier. But people who switched jobs saw their paychecks jump 7.7%. Will there finally be a Mega Millions winner tonight? We're going to have to wait and see. The drawing is tonight, and the jackpot is up to about $785 million. This is the fourth largest Mega Millions jackpot in the game's history. We're going to have the winning numbers tonight on the night beat and a recap in the morning on GMSA. And that's today's 9 at 9. Okay, and the other morning headlines, reaction and prayers continue to come in for Bill's safety. Damar Hamlin, who remains in a Cincinnati hospital after collapsing on the field last night. And a lot of crashes involving police around the country. David Sears is here with all of the stories. Good morning. Good morning, David. What's that? What? So what's wrong with people? I think your mic's off again. What's wrong with me? Uh, I think you're in. In three, two, one. Bam. There, there it you is. Go. You got it, brother. I don't know. You're here. What's wrong with people is my question. I, I don't know. We know what's wrong with your mic. We solved that. Okay. Yes. What's wrong with people? No idea. We're right. three days in. Lots of big questions this year. <laughs> Let's see. Yeah. We're just getting started. Let's uh, let's start with this, though. The faces tell the story. Buffalo Bills teammates of 24-year-old Damar Hamlin with tears and prayers for Hamlin. This is him right here. He suffered a cardiac arrest on the field during a game against Cincinnati Bengals last night. We've been telling you about that all morning. Hamlin is in the Cincinnati Hospital in critical condition. Now, his vitals are normal, but he was put to sleep last night to insert a breathing tube. The incident happened in the first few minutes of the game. He made what appeared to be a routine tackle. He took a hit to the chest, stood up, then collapsed. We're not going to show that to you, though. Paramedics worked on him, administering CPR for several minutes, getting his heartbeat back. He finally left the field in an ambulance about a half hour after he collapsed. While he was being worked on, his teammates gathered around, prayed. Some of the Bengals also joined in. After he was taken to the hospital, some of the Bills players stayed behind. They have been reacting on social media, and fans from both teams gathered at the hospital to pray together for Hamlin. Well, it's everybody coming together and, you know, it's a big family and that's what it is. Um, we're all here for him and I'm just glad to see two different cities come together. Obviously, the game was postponed by the NFL. No word yet on when it's going to be rescheduled. It does have a pretty big impact on the playoff picture. In the meantime, Hamlin's foundation that was raising money to help support kids after the pandemic now has over three million donations since the incident. Actor Jeremy Renner is also recovering after he suffered some serious injuries plowing snow. His bubbles has said that he suffered blunt chest trauma and apparently a broken leg and has undergone surgery. According to reports from TMZ, he was plowing snow at his home in Utah when the accident occurred. Somehow his leg got caught up under the plow. A neighbor doctor got a tourniquet on him while they waited for more medical folks to arrive. He was taken by helicopter to a nearby hospital. It has been a wild ride for law enforcement over the last few days all over the country. Apparently, a lot of folks who think it's just easier to run than stay and face the consequences. As it turns out, oh, they should have just stayed. A police chase came to an abrupt end and surreal end. A driver tried to evade authorities, wound up wedged under a UPS delivery truck. Police in Ohio say it started with reports of a truck that had crashed into a building. After responding, the pickup took off led officers on a short chase. It ended with the truck crashing into a UPS vehicle full of packages. Thankfully, the crash resulted in only minor injuries and hopefully delivered packages eventually. Another crazy caught on camera cop moment, this one in Michigan. A police dash cam captured a DUI crash that sent a car flying through the air end over end. Amazingly, the driver was not seriously injured in the gravity-defying crash. Police later posted the video saying, Sometimes a drunk driving arrest will land right in front of you, literally. A close call crash caught on camera also in Ohio had an officer thanking his lucky stars. The officer was helping a sideline driver when he spotted an out-of-control truck just in the nick of time. 
The pickup plowed into the police patrol car, but thankfully left the officer and truck driver unscathed. The driver cited for failure to control. I guess, I guess so. But that one flipping over. And then, of course, you know, how many times have you heard about somebody being intoxicated when they're driving and then they're able to walk away from an accident? Yeah, a I, lot have, of times. I had heard that. Mm -hmm. yep. So that should be a New Year's resolution for somebody. Don't drink and drive. How about that? Let's, we, let's try that one. We hope. <laughs> Thank you, David. All right, see you in a bit. See you. 908, 62 degrees. And Tiffany Huertas joins us now with a look at what she has coming up after the break. Tiffany? Good morning. Just check it out here. Students are learning all about cybersecurity, how to detect, investigate, and respond to cyber threats. A look at the different programs next. 912, welcome back. There's a space at Techport Center and Arena where students are being introduced to cybersecurity careers and are learning about this growing industry. Tiffany Huertas joins us live with a look at the different experiences students are having. Good morning, Tiffany. Good morning. This is Area 21. This is the museum inside the Techport and back all the way tucked back there, this is what you'll find. You'll find computer screens and monitors. Here, students become cyber warriors. To talk a little bit more about this, we have Cliff and Giselle. Good morning to both of you, Cliff. Talk to us about this space and what are students learning here? So when the students walk up, they first see these monitors, which are really amazing. Uh, there's live animations going on of attacks from all over the world that are happening that students see and then if you look over here they start to see professional tools that are used by the good guys and the bad guys when they are doing cyber operations and what we really want from students is for them to learn about cyber and STEM uh, to be inspired by cyber and STEM and then to put their hands on cyber and STEM and to learn what it feels like to have their hands on it and to know that there are careers in San Antonio because we have the second highest number of certified information security professionals in the United States right here in San Antonio. Amazing. And Giselle, tell me about the, the experience with these kids that come here. What's their reaction like? Oh, it's amazing. The first reaction they get is, wow, what's this? What's this? They're asking so many questions. They're full of curiosity. And that's honestly my favorite thing is them coming into a space, not really knowing what they're looking at, but they start asking these questions and they're answering it themselves almost in a way. They kind of observe everything and they're able to kind of piece together what they're looking at almost on their own sometimes. But that's where we come in and help further guide them from doing ciphers, encryption, decryption, cybersecurity. What's a SOC and why is that important? And just seeing the joy on their faces is really awesome. <laughs> and being part of this, you mentioned this is personal for you. Tell me about that. So I'm from this area. I've grown up here. I still live down the street. So kind of seeing the tech port come in here and us with SAMSAT come into the area and give STEM opportunities for kids to be more hands-on, no pressure of high-level academia. We bring it down to them and they bring it up to us. And it's just, it's awesome. It's a wonderful experience. <laughs> it is amazing to see the growth here over time. Now, Cliff, when can parents or schools or organizations come here? We are open 10 to 5 every day, Sundays 12 to 5, and also we have programs for schools and organizations. Uh, just visit us at samsat.org, uh, info at samsat.org. Let us know you'd like to come and we'll schedule a time for you. Amazing. Thank you both for joining us this morning. We're going to have more details coming up on the noon show. We'll send it back to you. Sounds good. Thank you, Tiffany. Go outside with live cam. Mount Cedar was a problem uh, going into the first couple of days of 2023 and you know we have that ksat explains mm -hmm. program well mm -hmm. today is justin explains ah, there you go uh yeah we, we want to talk a little bit about mountain cedar because it has been such a problem the last couple of days and today it jumped way up so a lot of people ask how do you measure mountain cedar how do we get the pollen count every morning so the hour just what they do is uh they, they take a slide and you get some of the pollen on it and they're measuring the pollen grains per cubic meter of air so Think about it like a little cube right. of air. Uh, there put it around, so. there you go, <laughs> one meter by one meter by one meter. And they measure how many grains of pollen are within that cubic meter. And that's how we come up with that number, which this morning happens to be over 11,000. Wow. Which is not uh, not great. It's like, no, no. down, down. Yes, get away. <laughs> go away. <laughs> there you go. There we go. Get rid of it. Uh, so th that's where we stand this morning. And I, I kind of want to, I want to show you a graph of where we've been as far as Mountain Cedar goes, and uh, we've had a rough couple days, honestly. Uh, so remember that Mountain Cedar peaks generally in late January 
and early February. We're not there yet. We haven't reached the peak of mountain cedar season. So we've got a ways to go, but that front last night brought in the northwesterly winds. It typically does it for us. Typically pushes these counts up and that's where we stand. 11,550 today. So just a heads up there. Uh, let's look at the dew point history. So that front did a lot for us. It obviously brought in the mountain cedar, but it also dropped off the dew point. So yesterday we had dew points in the 60s and 50s, but once that front came through, dew points dropped off to the 20s, and that's where we stand now. So the air is significantly drier thanks to that front. Dew points 29 at the airport, 28 Bernie Stage, 31 Hondo. And as we zoom out some, you'll see where all the moisture is. So it's uh, here across the southeast. This is going to be a problem. Yesterday we had severe weather. Not too, too much, but I think today's going to be another one of those days where we see quite a bit of activity off to our east. Look at the tornado watch boxes that are already in place. So this is around Memphis down to New Orleans, parts of Mississippi and Alabama. Then you got snow on the backside of this system. And for us, just some high clouds moving through. So we're we're done with any sort of rain chance, but it's across the southeast today where there will likely be quite a bit more widespread severe weather, and that's going to be New Orleans to Mobile, up to Montgomery and Jackson, Mississippi. A uh, large, large area, really, that could see some pretty strong storms. As we go outside for us right now, we've got some blue skies and 62 northwesterly winds at about 5. Those winds are a little gusty earlier, but they've since died down. It's going to turn into a pretty nice day. That front doesn't cool us down a whole lot, uh, so around noontime we're at 70, and by the afternoon, even with some high clouds drifting through, I think we may get temperatures up into the upper 70s. Not as hot as yesterday, but still warm by January standards. Uh, 72 Bandera, 74 in Hondo. If you're watching us from Canyon Lake, 74 for you today, 76 in San Marcos, and 77 for our friends out in Seguin. Let's look long term now. So this storm system is moving away. We're going to get some ridging as we come into uh, Thursday and Friday. What does that mean? Well, great weather. Uh, more or less. We'll have cool mornings and then really nice afternoons. It's not until the weekend that our next storm system starts to pull in here. And this one's going to bring some energy in. Again, we miss a lot of it to the north, but I think there's an opportunity here. There's going to be a frontal boundary. And late Saturday, Saturday night into Sunday is the timing I'm looking at right now. We could see some showers and storms, and this will cool us down ever so slightly. Uh, but uh, again, this won't be a, a big cool down and then the rain should move out by Sunday evening. So here's how it looks in the seven day forecast. Uh, we say a little bit breezy today. Obviously, those winds have already died down, so I'll take that off the seven day. But 75 Wednesday, 74 Thursday, 76 Friday. The mornings will be in the 40s and then uh, humidity returns Friday afternoon into Saturday morning. So that's when we can see a little bit of patchy fog to start Saturday, quite a bit of cloud cover on Saturday and then a 30% chance of rain as it stands right now. And I'd say that Saturday evening, they're about midday Sunday, cools us down a little bit Sunday into Monday. There were some references in earlier newscasts of some wild weather in other parts of the state of Texas today. Nothing really happening, right? No, I, Texas is pretty much done with the severe weather. So okay. it's shifting east ever so slightly, but there will be some wild weather, I'm afraid, across the southeastern portion of the country. Okay. We'll prepare. Good yeah. to know. Justin. Thank you, Justin. 919, 63 degrees. And we come back, a look at some of the big trials set to play out this year that we're going to be watching closely. The shy 923 2023 has several high profile court cases on the docket. We mentioned sentencing for former Bear County Constable Michelle Barrientes Vela continuing this morning, but there are other cases to look ahead to. Court reporter Eric Hernandez gives us a look at several high profile cases we're expecting to see play out this year. Trials that we've been anticipating look to finally start in 2023. We first have to mention the Andre McDonald case. The trial was supposed to start in 2021, but delays have kept it from going. McDonald, an Army major in 2019, is accused of killing his wife, Andrine McDonald, and disposing of her body in North Bear County. As of right now, jury selection is set to begin January 17th. And right after the McDonald trial, the Iman Johnson trial is expected to begin in February. Johnson in 2017 is accused of setting fire to his gym that spread to an entire shopping center. The fire caused the death of SAFD firefighter Scott Deems and injured two others. Johnson is facing multiple charges in this case, including murder and arson. Next up, while no date is set yet, but the retrial for Mark Howerton could finally take place. Howerton is accused of the 2017 murder of Trinity University cheerleader Kaylee Mandotti. In 2019, Howerton's trial ended in a mistrial with a hung jury. 
His defense attorneys have tried to stop the retrial from happening, but a fourth court of appeals denied that request earlier this year. Also, a case to watch is that of Andrew Elizondo. If you remember, on Mother's Day in 2021, a six-year-old girl was killed as her mother drove away from a car club gathering. Elizondo was charged with the murder, and his next court date is the end of January. Erica Hernandez, KSAT 12 News. Of course, all these upcoming dates can always change, but we'll keep you updated on air and online. You can also sign up for our open court newsletter on KSAT.com. And coming up in the next half hour, we're going to introduce you to one of the newest judges on the bench here in Bear County. Right now, 924, 64 degrees more ahead on GMSA at 9. Including a look at Rolling Stone's list of the greatest singers of all time, and there were a lot of artists left off of that list. Plus a heartwarming story about a young boy in New York who's inspiring people with his voice. We'll be right back. Welcome back to 928. A fourth grader right behind Steph over here, on the, almost on his tippy toes. There, there. you go. Uh, he's getting a lot of attention for his voice right now. He's not a singer, though. He's a poet, and he gave quite a speech at New York Governor Kathy Hochul's inauguration this past weekend. ABC's Will Gant introduces us to the young man who took center stage in New York. A nine-year-old standing on his tiptoes. I didn't think people could see me. Like. <laughs> Delivering what many are calling the most powerful speech of New York Governor Kathy Hochul's inauguration. In my mind, I used to be a child of poverty, not knowing that hopes and dreams can, and become, dreams reality. can become reality. The speech only 82 seconds long, but the crowd in Albany hung on Caden Hearn's every word. Black is the color of my skin, so soft, beautiful, silky, and smooth. The fourth grader received a personal invitation from Governor Hochul to serve as Poet Laureate on Sunday. My strategy is I don't look at the crowd. I look straight up and think of like all the things, th good things that have happened to you. Caden first got into poetry during the pandemic, thanks to some encouragement from his grandmother, who was with him in Albany this week. I was so overjoyed. I was full of emotion. I was the proudest grandmother in the whole wide world. Caden first met Governor Hochul at the Apollo in Harlem last summer when he performed at Amateur Night. Wanting to make my ancestors proud. Who am I? Caden introduced himself to the governor, said he was a poet, and shared one of his pieces with her. Who am I, a child, a black male child, wanting to live but not afraid to die? Governor Hochul promised that if she got elected, he'd be invited to her swearing-in ceremony. As for what's next for Caden... Maybe speaking for the president? Will Gans, ABC News, New York. Let's look out there with live cam. It's starting a little breezy this morning. The 64 degrees looks pretty good right now. Yeah, it feels not so bad. It's, it's kind of refreshing, I'd say, because you had that front that came through last night, brought in the drier air. It just feels a little bit better out there, other than the mountain cedars we talked about earlier. We're going to have some clouds floating through the sky today, but not a big deal. You'll see plenty of sun, too, and temperatures will make the way up into the 70s. Really a pretty nice day. It's chilly up there in Junction 44, but the rest of us still seeing 60s, uh, 62 at the airport, 65 Pleasanton, 15 Kerrville. So not too chilly this morning. Tomorrow morning will be a different story. Make sure the kids have their jackets ready because we'll start off in the 40s probably next several days. Uh, it'll be nice during the afternoons, but chilly in the mornings. Uh, 63, Randolph 60 in Seguin, 64, Gonzalez 61, Canyon Lake 62 right now in Hondo. Dew points, as I said, are low. We've got 20s and 30s, so that's very, very dry air. And uh, that sticks with us for a while. Kiss at 12 hour forecast, 70 by noontime. We're up around 77 this afternoon, 75 at 5 o'clock, and then down into the 60s this evening with mostly clear skies. What about our next chance of rain? Doesn't show up until Saturday and Sunday. If you have weekend plans, you'll want to pay attention. There is a chance for some showers and storms, and we'll jump into the details on that coming up in just a couple minutes. Thank you, Justin. The new year brings new judges to our area, and one of those judges is 186 criminal district court judge Christina Escalona. Now, Courtney Friedman sat down with her to talk about her new role at the Justice Center. Jesse Castilla. Christina Escalona is no stranger to the Kadena Reeves Justice Center, having worked four years at the district attorney's office right after graduating from St. Mary's University Law School, then as a criminal defense attorney. 
And after that experience, it opened my eyes, it made me a better person, it made me a better attorney, and then I took that experience and I returned to the DA's office. She has been at the DA's office since then, but knew it was time to try a new role, criminal district court judge. Once I realized and saw the role that a judge could have, you know, having someone stand right in front of them looking into their eyes and having such an impact on their life and the life of the community that I was born and raised in, um, it, that, it just be quickly became something I wanted to do and it quickly became a goal and a dream of mine. That dream was inspired by her parents who at times worked several jobs to give Christina and her brother the best education possible. I always saw what hard work could do and what hard work could accomplish through my parents. And with tears and pride in their eyes, they stood right beside Judge Escalona as she was sworn in as the new 186th Criminal District Court Judge. I promise I will work every day. Judge Escalona is now ready for the hard work to begin. And what I hope to accomplish in the 186 is I, I hope to accomplish justice. Courtney Friedman, KSAT 12 News. Maybe a new year, but the trend of higher grocery prices are sticking around. The USDA's food price outlook expects food to cost between three and a half to four and a half percent more this year than last year. In today's Consumer Watch, Mandy Gaither has tips that could save you money during your next grocery run. Groceries eating up your monthly budget? Experts say a bit of planning can let you keep more cash in your pocket while still enjoying your favorite items on the menu. Our food spending is the silent killer of our budget. Financial counselor Kamiko Love recommends following these five steps to reduce spending. Number one, always start with a list. Before you even head to the grocery store, take inventory of your pantry, fridge, and freezer. I pick out recipes based on what I already have at home, and I create that list of what I still need to get. That way you buy only what you need instead of what you're tempted to buy. Number two, shop from home. Avoid temptations at the grocery store altogether and shop online for grocery pickup or delivery instead. It's easier to delete items from your virtual cart if you're over budget. But it also allows you to compare pricing very easily because it puts all similar food categories together. Number three, don't just check the price. Look at the price per unit. Many times it's cheaper to buy items as a whole instead of buying pre-cut or pre-made products. Number four, use a loyalty app. Join your grocery store's loyalty programs, follow them on social media, and download their apps to find coupons and other deals. Number five, buy generic over brand names. Store brands or generic brands are a lot of the times made in the same facility as the brand names that we gravitate towards. For Consumer Watch, I'm Mandy Gaither. We brought David Sears back to talk with us about this next story. So Rolling Stone published a list of the greatest 200 singers of all time. There's a lot of talk about this list, the way the artists are ranked and why some greats were left off the list altogether. So some singers not on the list are Celine Dion, Michael Jackson, and Dionne Warwick, but there are several others that were snubbed as well. We'll come back and talk about those in a minute, but let's look at who did make the list. Here's the top 10 in order of one through 10. Yes. Aretha Franklin, mm -hmm. uh -huh. Whitney Houston, Sam Cooke, Billie Holiday, Mariah Carey, Ray Charles, Stevie Wonder, Beyonce, Otis Redding, and Al Green. Okay, all, all right, so that's the top 10. All great, all great singers. Mm, all great singers, but I'm not going with that being the top 10. You, so, you have a beef with the order uh, when it comes to I George I would have put Strait. Whitney Houston first, then Aretha Franklin, and then I would have Carrie Underwood third. And Carrie's way down the list for yeah, sure. Yeah, she's not even. No, she, I thought she was like in the hundreds. So even more controversial, it was obviously who did apparently not make yeah. the list. Mm -hmm. And we've scanned the list a bunch of times, and there's some notable names missing. Yes. One of them is Celine Dion. Yep. And then Michael and Janet Jackson are not on the list. Okay, yeah. Michael Jackson's got to be on the list. I'm, right. You know, you can. So does Tony right. Bennett. And Madonna. What? The yeah. woman of the ages. Dionne Warwick <laughs> didn't make the list? Yeah, yes. that too. Needed a sting. Wait, who's, who's on this list? I exactly. know. There, so I have to admit, and then I was, I was feeling like, well, I thought I knew music, you know, a lot of music, but there are a lot of artists there that I do not recognize. Right. Also not on the list, Nat King Cole, yeah. Pink, uh -oh. 
And what? Jennifer Hudson's know, not on the list? Jennifer Hudson. You, David, you were talking about the ranking was kind of funky, too. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Here, Billie here, Eilish yeah. is like 198. Billie Eilish is on the list. Yeah, yeah. Look at, so well, Willie, yeah. Willie's Billie. on the list, but he ranked yeah. 54th. 54th, yes. okay. Diana Dying. Ross, we thought wasn't on the list, but she's on the list. She's Yeah, she's but she's in the 80s, 87. Selena, very popular in South Texas. She ranked 89. Well, she got on there. Right. Yeah. Wait, Ta hold on. So Taylor Swift ahead of George Strait? I knew that was coming. <laughs> Are you <laughs> serious? We flip-flopped it just to get a rise out of you. No, I'm kidding. Did no, you, Taylor. Is that no, really happening? No, no, no. Really the order that's Taylor really Swift what happened. George got, Strait? She that's, broke the internet. No, who she put this list together? What's <laughs> the, the criteria the for this? The Ticketmaster yes. fiasco just last month. Taylor oh. did yeah. finish mm -hmm. ahead of King George no. on this list. Oh, uh, no. Yeah, maybe not, maybe so. not South Texas, but like, you know, over so the U.S. So here's what I thought this morning, and this okay. is right before you came in. I wondered okay. if this was just kind of a stir the pot clickbait kind of uh -huh. thing. Mm -hmm. And apparently been. I wasn't the only one to think that. One of our regular viewers, Oscar yes. Carrero, wrote on Facebook. He <laughs> said, definitely <laughs> clickbait. <laughs> if it was a list most people agreed with, they would get far fewer views on the oh, article. It's go. a bad list just for the sake of controversy. So pathetic. So sad. Again, I didn't write it. This is from KSAT yeah. viewer Oscar Carrera. Yeah. But I wholeheartedly agree with this. And, of course, it's getting a lot of play today because of, of this. Well, yeah. It, I mean, and it is interesting to look at the list. And it mm -hmm. also reminded me of some artists I had forgotten about over the years. That's true. And, and there are a ton on there that, that and I know we're, we're getting up there, but uh, there's a ton on there that we've <laughs> never heard of before. Yeah. Well, since I now know it's just kind of bunk, I'm not even going to click on it. So you're going to get one of my clicks. One there. less click right there. So <laughs> take that rolling click. stone. Well, that didn't work out for you. You know, it's, it's so bad. It's almost like the end of the names and some sort of a randomizer app <laughs> shook the phone yeah. and said, here's our list. I, our list. Some of them don't seem to be in order. No, you no. I mean, there, there were some good calls, of, but a lot, yeah. a lot of that should some be some right. Well. Yeah. I mean, you know, you would Others agree with, but some are not. Like, huh? Ah, Rolling Stone. Thanks for starting us on that <laughs> yeah, kind of note for go. 2023. It'll be All revised right. next year. We can certainly <laughs> hope so. 939, 65 degrees. You're watching GMSA at night. We'll be right back. Tell you what, this Rolling Stone list has still got people fired up during the commercial break. Right, I'm not right even here. kidding here, mm -hmm. yeah. So <laughs> we're trying to bring people together here. All right, after more than 90 years, San Antonio's iconic Tower Life building that graces the San Antonio skyline is on the verge of a multi-million dollar transformation. The transformation will happen with the help of Bear County and its partners, Alamo Capital Advisors, developer Ed Cross, and the McCombs family. Jesse DeGoyado says the new year will be a busy one ahead with the work starting in 2024. It's been the signature of our skyline for as long as I can remember. The Tower Life Building will continue to be, since it's on the National Register of Historic Places. It's under the watchful eyes of the National Park Service and the Texas Historical Commission. The exterior facade is historic and we are going to protect it. The interior will become a mixed-use residential building. Real estate investor and developer John Wiegand says a restaurant will overlook the Riverwalk on the ground floor of what used to be a six-story Sears and Roebuck. We don't have department stores like that anymore. While vacant floors like this one will have 234 apartments, those on the upper level will have a view of the city. Weekend says half will be renting below market rate. We think an important part of community is a blend of careers and backgrounds and ages. Where once the renowned architect at Lee B. Ayer's office in the building he designed, so did a future president, General Dwight D. Eisenhower. His headquarters were in this building. And criminal defense attorney Jerry Goldstein has been here since he graduated from law school. So I've been doing this for 55 years. And this is the only office I've ever known. Every landmark has a story. The Tower Life Building is no different. We have an amazing repository of history in this building. This isn't just a doorknob. What I'm holding is literally a piece of history. A doorknob of solid brass with its original insignia as the Smith Young Tower. An example of the Tower Life Building's architectural detail and beauty undertaken by Weekend and his partners. You don't feel like the owner. You feel like the steward for the next generation. Jesse Degollado, KSET 12 News. Beautiful shot there with the sun shining. 944, if anybody's doing some last minute traveling or maybe has to take a business trip today, where should we be watching for trouble, trouble spots? Well, it's going to be the West Coast. It's been a problem up San Francisco, uh, northern parts of California, and then the Southeast. So kind of the, the corners of the nation here in Texas, we're, we're sitting pretty. We had a front move through last night, brought some 
gusty winds for a while, but we, those have settled down, and now we're getting some sun out there. So let's look at the water vapor, and I think this is always uh, is a great tool for telling the weather story here. You see the spin in the atmosphere right there. Pretty significant spin. That's our low pressure, so you got snow on the back side of it, and then out ahead of it, you got a lot of moisture, and that's getting lifted and becoming thunderstorms. So we're going to see quite a few thunderstorms today out across the southeast. Notice that we're on the back side of things. We've just got some high clouds coming in from the west. So that's all we'll see is just some cloud cover. And then I mentioned the west coast. Still got that stream of moisture coming in across northern parts of California, which is causing some issues there. So as we look at the current setup, there is the uh, tornado watch boxes that are currently in place. And these uh, cover a lot of real estate. So Kentucky all the way down to Louisiana. And then you got parts of Mississippi and Alabama included in here too. This line means business and as it moves into a really unstable atmosphere there could be some severe weather but also the, the risk for some tornadoes later today. The, uh, the potential there is highest closest to the Gulf Coast. So Montgomery down to New Orleans, Mobile and Jackson. On the back side of that we've got some dry air. So you look at the dew point trend uh, will be very low today. Dew points will be in the 20s and 30s even lower tomorrow. Thursday still very dry. It's Friday where our dew points start to build again and then that's when we start to see the potential for rain. Whenever you start to see the moisture surging back in here at a pretty quick rate, you also likely deal with some fog. That comes to us uh, Saturday morning. Uh, at least that's what the forecast is looking like right now. As we go outside for you, blue skies, a few clouds out there, 62 at the airport, 64 stints and 62 at Kelly. We're still looking at a north or northwesterly wind, but it's not all that strong. 53 in Kerrville, 53 Fredericksburg, 44 in Junction. That's where you find the cold stuff. Uh, not as cold as you get out towards Gonzales, Pleasanton, 67 there, and around Bear County. We're in the low to mid 60s at this hour. Our case at 12 hour forecast. By noontime, we're up around 70. This front does not really cool us down all that much. It was warm and humid yesterday. We just lose the humidity. Still going to be fairly warm this afternoon. We're up around 77 for a high. Northwesterly winds 5 to 10. And then tonight, you'll see temperatures fall pretty quickly this evening because we have that dry air in place. And by tomorrow morning, we're in the 40s. So don't forget to send the kids to school tomorrow with everyone starting back with a jacket because they'll need it next few days. Probably won't need it in the afternoon, but the mornings, yes. We're down to 46 tomorrow morning, 43 Thursday morning, 48 Friday morning uh, before those lows moderate with the added moisture this weekend. Let's look down the line. I mentioned the moisture coming back in Saturday and Sunday. This first storm system moves away. We get quiet weather Thursday and Friday. Whenever you see sort of ridging like this, that typically means pretty uh, nice weather for Texas. But we get another trough digging in by Saturday into Sunday. And as this moves through, this should help to generate some showers and storms. We've got a frontal boundary with this too. And so by Saturday afternoon, chance of some showers, maybe a storm, and that'll be the case through about Sunday morning before this shifts out and uh, we see clearing skies Sunday afternoon. So here's how it looks in the seven day forecast. 75 Wednesday, 74 Thursday, mid 70s Friday. Humidity returns Friday night into Saturday and then about a 30 percent chance of rain as it stands right now Saturday into Sunday. As we hone in on the weekend and get some better model data we should be able to i hope raise rain chances just a little bit but we'll keep you posted there uh, potentially some rain over the weekend okay all right well we hope so we need it yep we do well we were talking about the movie Megan last week when we showed you a preview of the new movies coming out this month well it comes out this friday and turns out we aren't the only ones freaked out by megan uh, i definitely am one of the actresses in the movie is creeped out too take a look megan what are you doing? Couldn't sleep. Occupational hazard. The most creepy was like Megan off in her off moments was like so scary because even when you're working with her, there's the sense that she's very alive, but she seems like the potential of her aliveness is even more threatening when she's doing nothing at all. Megan, turn off. Are you sure? Yes, I'm sure. sure. <laughs> forever. <laughs> you might recognize actress Allison Williams from the Jordan Peele movie Get Out. She is returning to horror movies with Megan. The movie is about an artificially intelligent android who rebels against her creator. And in case you're wondering, Megan is a real robotic prototype, but some parts of the movie are played by an actual person. And the voice is that of 18 year old Jenna Davis. That answered all my questions because I was watching, wondering, is that a real person? Right. 
Right. But it's so it's Android most of the time, and then sometimes a real person. I'm not gonna see it, so I don't know. I don't, <laughs> don't want to see it list. either. No idea. I saw the preview. Well, I mean, before I even knew what it was, I was like, ah, I was like, what is that? I was like, oh goodness, thank. I'm on the fence. I like horror. I like horror. I like horror movies. You like to be scared. You like to be scared too, right? Well, That's why you work with us. <laughs> Silly, you're not scared. <laughs> hey, when you're done with this, go look at that doll and then go Google the actress Felicity Jones, who was in uh, Theory of Everything, Star Wars, A Rogue Story, Rogue oh, yeah, One. Yeah. Uh huh. Yeah, I think that the model, the girl doll, looks oh, almost exactly yeah. like actress Ro Felicity. Rogue One, yeah, Rogue yeah, One. you're right. Yeah, Felicity Jones, so check it out. Doesn't make it any less creepy, but I'm just trying <laughs> to help. No, yeah, I'm not going to watch it. All right, night 50, 66 degrees. And we'll be right back with David and Look at sports. And welcome back. A little bit of sad news this morning. Former Texas and South Sand baseball coaching legend Cliff Gustafson has passed away. He was 91. That's according to the University of Texas. Now, Cliff led the Longhorns to two national championships, 22 conference titles. He was there for 29 seasons. Before that, he was here in San Antonio. He was the head coach of the South Sand High School Bobcats, where he led the Bobcats to seven state 3A titles in just 10 years. Once again, Cliff Gustafson was 91. How about those Spurs last night? What, what is that saying? It was over before it ever got started? Oh my, were you watching last night, Steph? What happened? No, I saw that it was already bad early on this time around. They got outscored 37-25 in the first quarter and it was downhill from there. So that was not a good way to start this little road trip with the Nets and the Knicks next. The Knicks next. Knicks yeah. next. Got they, beat, yeah. they beat the Knicks here, though. Yeah, yeah. they did. So, yeah, yeah. yeah. that's a positive right on, thing. Yeah. on a Thursday. Kyrie Irving had 27. Kevin Durant had 25. The Nets shot 62% from the field. Wow. They shot like 55% from three-point range, and the Spurs shot like 25% from three-point range. So you know how that goes. That's, mm -hmm. that's not going to work. So yeah. tomorrow night, it is the Knicks that are next. It needs to be Star Wars night over there. Oh, is so, that what it so is? So first can win. Helps. Yeah, yeah they maybe. Need, they need the force and more. <laughs> well, they need something, yeah. yeah. All right, so we'll see what happens. Yeah. All right, David, thank you. Huh? This weekend, over 100 high school athletes from about 64 high schools will be playing the All-Star football game, followed by the National High School All-Star event, the All-American Bowl. Tomorrow on GMSA at 9, we're going to speak with a representative from San Antonio Sports about the games and what you need to know if you're planning on heading out to the Alamo Dome. So tune in for that tomorrow at 9. Now let's get a final look at the weather. We're in the mid-60s right now, mid-70s by this afternoon. 75 Wednesday, 74 Thursday. Really a beautiful work week, but we will see humidity returning by the weekend with a chance for some showers and storms Saturday and Sunday. Remember last week when we sat down and we did sports over there uh -huh. last week? Yeah, I got so nice. many comments. People loved that last <laughs> story time. <laughs> Like it was fun. Let's do it again. Yeah. yeah. I don't oh. think we're allowed to for a year. Uh oh. <laughs>